Welcome. Good evening, everyone. So here we are this evening with the Buck Skills Hub with Pathway CTM. So I'm Max from Pathway CTM. And tonight we're looking at Key Stage 3, Crafting Your Career. And this is a virtual skill session. We're talking about skills and skills in different industries. Now, um, I am from Pathway CTM and I'm hosting a session. So I'm just going to make sure that the stuff that comes through the chat box is relayed back to our panelists. And I'm going to be asking a few questions and keeping things going. The important people that we have on the session are going to be our panelists. And I want you guys to remember that we're talking about um, companies that are in your area. They're different as well. So they might have different skills. And we're going to be talking about that. I'm going to ask you students some questions as well. So start to get your thinking gear in in, in, uh, in, uh, in preparation for some questions coming through. Nothing too difficult because we know it is later in the evening. But I do want you guys to think about things as well. But to do that, let's meet our panelists. Let's see who they are. Let's see what they do, where they work and what kind of industry they're in. And then we'll get going with the questions. So the first person I'm going to say welcome to is Catherine. Catherine? Welcome. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, my name is Catherine Maidment. I am from the Pima Group based in Ivor Heath in Buckinghamshire. And I am the Senior communica uh, Communications Community and Education Outreach Manager, uh, basically looking after the community needs and uh, helping where I can with the Buck Skills Hub um, and helping students figure out if there is a suitable role for them in the creative industries. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. And when you say the creative industries, what does Pinewood do? Give us a flavour of kind of things you guys do. Uh, Pinewood is home to many productions such as Star Wars, um, uh, Ant-Man, uh, Maleficent. Uh, basically, Pinewood Studios, uh, I'm staff at Pinewood Studios. Uh, there are 200 of us, everyone else on site. Is, is based on a production and those big blockbuster films that are made um, and currently filming will end up on your screens. So we help facilitate, uh, maintain those world-class facilities um, and welcome those uh, VIPs to site every day. Fantastic, that all sounds very exciting. Thank you for that. Okay, and then we're gonna get onto your um, questions about skills in a short while. Next person we're gonna meet is Paddy. Paddy from EKFB, good evening, how are you? Yeah, good evening, Max. Uh, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, good evening to all parents and guardians and, and students on the call. So my name is Paddy Patterson. I work for EKFB. We are a main work civil engineering contractor working on the High Speed 2 project. Uh, so very prominent across Buckinghamshire. Uh, and my job as an SEE manager, which stands for Skills, Employment and Education, is, is really I'm, I'm responsible and interested in, in all things in terms of the jobs that we create, the people we employ, the training that we provide. Um, and that obviously links back very closely into the education sector. So our work with schools and colleges is incredibly important, not just in terms of our project, um, but also in terms of the wider engineering and construction sector. Fantastic. That's brilliant. And HS2 is the train line that is being built that goes from south to north. Is that right? Yeah, it goes from, from there to there, basically, Good behind me perfect. and beyond. Perfect. Perfect. OK, brilliant. And we'll be back to you again with some uh, some questions in a short while. Next person that we're going to meet is Nigel. And Nigel, I've got you down here is from the Digital Manufacturing Centre. So welcome. Tell us a bit about you and what you guys do. Yeah. So hello, everybody. Um, so as I said, my name is Nigel Robinson. I'm the CEO of um, the Digital Manufacturing Centre based up at Silverstone. So we're a additive manufacturing company, a 3D company, 3D printing company. Um, so we supply pretty much all sectors. So today, right now, we're, we're doing a project that is uh, making sure a F1 car gets its parts on Sunday's race at Brazil. And, and it could be a game changer. So there's a very high profile to next week, building something that goes on a spaceship um, and a rocket, rocket chambers, satellites, um, automotive, hypercars, sports cars, industrial oil and gas, whatever it is, um, additive manufacturing can be used right across the board. So uh, from a high engineering, advanced engineering, it's a fantastic, uh, uh, a fantastic industry to be part of because it's, it's now coming in through its evolution stages. And uh, as I say, we're now supporting so many cool companies out there. That sounds very exciting. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna ask the question, but I'm gonna guess you're gonna say, I can't tell you who it is. But if we were to get, are we allowed to know which Formula One team it is that we're doing 3D printing for? Um, no. 
if it's Mercedes, can you make However, sure it's, a, it's a British based team? Let's say that. That, well, knows, that, 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 that knows it down, doesn't it? That's, so, a, that's all of them except for like we one actually supply all the teams in the UK. So, um, very uh, excellent. We're, we're working on the 2022 car, um, on wind tunnel models, um, but we're also supplying end use parts that go on the car, but um, any sector, any, very any. And, uh, and it's great to think, so students that are out there, this is in your area, this is where you guys live. That's very exciting. Um, I might have to move and change industry. Right, brilliant. Last person that we're gonna meet, but not least, is Dave. Dave from Esri. Welcome, good evening, how are you? Hi, yeah, yeah, so I am Dave Morgan. I work for um, Esri UK, and Esri UK is a software company, essentially. Um, so we work with a, um, a particular technology um, which is geographic information systems or, or GIS. Um, so essentially it's the software um, that allows our customers to um, sort of ask and answer questions that involve um, the, the where question really. So it's about kind of where stuff happens. Um, so it might be a supermarket company saying, where's the best place for us to build a new supermarket? Um, it might be looking at the spread of COVID-19 and, and where are places um, that kind of infection rates are hotspots or, or things like that. So um, all sorts of different customers across pretty much every industry, um, kind of asking asking those kind of where questions. Interesting, interesting. So guys, we can see there that we've got quite a spread across different industries. But again, like I said, all in your area. A couple of things I want to emphasize, and then I'm going to get some questions in. Um, tonight's session is live. Now, if you guys watch this session and think this is great information and this is valuable, it is also being recorded because it is going to go on the Buck Skills Hub and it is going to be available to be viewed afterwards. So if you watch this, especially for, uh, for some of the young ones out there, and if you think this is amazing and I want to know more about that and I think my mates should know about it as well, let them know so that they can use the recording afterwards as well. And that's why we're here making this content as well. Uh, this, will, this will live on long and it's going to be a resource that can be used for, for a while. So what I want to now ask is um, for the students that are out there. Now, I understand that um, you guys are at the beginning of a, a of, um, sort of an exploration about strengths and skills and what are they and what am I good at? And what am I not good at? And how can I learn new things or try new things? So I get that from that point of view. But what I want you guys to tell me, doesn't matter whether you're year seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, doesn't matter. Tell me what skills do you think we look for in the workplace? And also what skills or strengths, skills and strengths, do you currently have that you know that you have that you're good at? Put them in the chat box. I know that's going to be quite a lot of you, but I'm ready for this. Put them in the chat box. We want to know. So what skills do you have currently that you know that you use and you're good at? And what do you think employers look for? What skills? And think about these industries we talked about. And, you know, they're so varied and different. Do you think they're all different skills that you're needing? Are they similar? Give me some ideas. Okay. So we've got some people who are good at football, so sports, creativity. And Brent, I want you to think about when you say you're good at football, think about as well, what does that also make you good at? OK, think of the environment and the setting you work in. So we've got creativity, um, confidence. We've got uh, some people are fast, good with communication, maths and problem solving, organisation. It's a great stuff. This is really good stuff. More communication, collaboration, acting, teamwork, gaming. And gaming is a really important one now. Um, I learned this last year. Gaming is really uh, important. There's a lot of companies, depending on their sectors and what they do, that look at people with gaming skills. OK, so we're looking at movies as well. Organizational skills, how to use resources. Lots of great stuff. Positivity. That's a really important one. Adaptability, research capability. OK, we've got somebody in here who plays the piano as well, which is brilliant. So we've got Callum's a team player. He's good at communication. He's creative. He's sporty. Somebody's put punctual in there as well. Punctual is a very good one. Um, your bosses will love you for it. Socialising, organised and on time. So many good ones. Writing, editing, art. And Emma, you can remove the word I think and just go with you are good at maths. You definitely are good at maths, science, gaming and art. OK, and put music. We've got music. And again, we've got listening skills. Absolutely. Good technology knowledge, which when I was your age, my technology knowledge was nowhere near as good because technology was very, very different. I liked the sense of humour one, Max. Oh, did I get to that one yet? We've got sense of humour and positivity. They're two of my favourite as well, actually. Always good. Always good to work with people who are positive and have a good sense of humour. 
Okay, we've got perseverance. And Chris, remove that question mark from the end of cooking. Cooking is a skill and it is a good one to have. Now, when you look at some of these skills that we've got, like playing the piano, playing the guitar, good at football, basketball, um, cooking, um, being good at maths, all of these things. What I also want you to think about when we talk tonight is what other what can we break those skills down into? So when we say we're good at football or we're good at playing the piano, think about what you need to be able to do to be good at football. Okay, is it is it um, are you fit? Do you need to train? Do you have uh, dedication to to train? Um, is it a good team player? So do you work well with other people? So you're good in part of the team. Okay, are you the captain? So are you a good leader? Okay, think about those things. And when you learn musical instruments, you know, um, is it dexterity that you have? Do you use your hands well? Can you read music well? Is it the ability to put the two together and learn quickly? OK, think about these things because they are also strengths that you have within you. Now, like I said, I appreciate the beginning. We are a young audience and you guys are still exploring these things and trying to work out what it is that you have that you are good at. And there's some situations you've not been in yet. So you just don't have those skills yet or you do have them. You just never use them. But that's what you're going to explore in your life in the next few years. But when we hear from the guys tonight, when we hear from the panelists tonight, tonight and what they talk about, Think about it and think about which which ones of those skills that they talk about that excite you and see as well when they talk, do they all have different skills in their industries? Are they all very different? Are there any that are similar? Do some overlap? What does it look like? So we'll explore that as you go along. But I want you guys to think about it as we go along tonight. OK, we've got lots of people with a good sense of humor, the ability to concentrate in lessons. Absolutely. Some people are great at concentrating and being focused on a task. And those are really good people to have. Me, I'm not so great at concentrating on one task. I like to do five things at the same time. We've got good memory. Lots of people who play musical instruments, okay? This is great. It's really, really good stuff. We've got a lot coming through. This is good for me. So let's get started with our panelists. And Catherine, I said I was gonna to come to you first, okay? When we talk about your industry and the roles that within your industry and the role that you do as well, what kind of skills are needed? What skills do you have um, and, and, and across that industry as well? And maybe I'll ask you now as well, um, what, what skills have you developed since you've worked in that industry or since you've worked in that job that maybe you weren't using before? Okay, um, so I'm gonna start off with how I ended up in this sector because at the time when I was looking for a career choice, it, it wasn't apparent to me that I could join the creative sector. Um, so my dad told me to go out and get a skill that I could transfer to any sector. So I learned to type, uh, which, of course, everybody could do with their eyes shut now. Um, but it was a physical course, a secretarial course. I did it for a year. And with that, I managed to get an assistance job in a film distribution company. And that's how I started my career. So my career started with skill. But, but I didn't realize how work ready I was in terms of punctuality, working as a team. Um, my willingness to learn, which are all skills that students on this panel today have, but don't realise they use on a daily basis to get themselves ready for the world of work. Um, with this position that I had, which was at the bottom, and there's nothing wrong with starting at entry level positions and at the bottom, uh, it was my passion and my inquisitiveness, um, my willingness to learn uh, that, that basically took me up the ladder in the industry, uh, somewhat 30 three years ago, I've been in the film industry for 33 years. Um, and, and I learned on the job. Uh, so it was my self assertiveness. Um, it was my English, my maths, um, but my attitude towards learning and work that that really has got me where I am today. Uh, and sitting on this panel, um, I have to say, I don't envy any of you guys looking for a career choice. Um, but I don't think it's as, as solid as it was when I was looking for a career choice in terms of career pathways. There are many skills that you can transfer to different sectors um, and different jobs along the way. So even if you have an idea of what it is you want to do, um, just, just think about that, that uh, bigger picture. And I'm going to take sports and music for the creative industry, Max, and just give a couple of examples. Um, let's take football. That was mentioned. Um, football doesn't necessarily just mean football it, you could be an advisor for a film on football there have been many films about football because they do need experts to tell them how to play the game and they're getting the rules right obviously when they're filming make believe 
they have to have someone there who knows what they're doing as an expert and then we take music um every film every high-end television product uh, program that you see has music and music is is absolutely pivotal to that production um and is obviously from musicians so uh, even those those two quick examples many jobs available within the creative sector around those jobs have to say that English and maths are the VIPs of any requirement. Um, I am looking through CVs at the moment. If anything is spelled incorrectly, if anything if is not grammatically correct, um, I will put it to the bottom of the pile. So please concentrate on your maths and English. It's massively important. Um, and I know some people put there having fun, sense of humour. I totally agree with that. Uh, we spend a lot of time at work um, and I think it's really good. Uh, but, but also a skill is judging when to use that humour and when to be able to use that humour and with whom. Um, so that's another skill. So that's me starting off the, the conversation. Fantastic. There's some great uh, great things in there as well. Um, students as well think about this. Uh, the point that Catherine made absolutely in terms of um, spelling and grammar are really important. Um, and remember to always use the tools that are available to you, whether that is other people, um, whether that is functions within computers as well so that you learn and you improve and you you, you get better at these things skills are these things that will always uh, develop and change the more you use them the better you get at them um and some will develop as you get a chance to use them you might not in a younger stage but later on you will um that's brilliant there's a great question that's there for you that i'm going to come back to later catherine um but let's move on so paddy paddy from ekfb same question to you really yeah, and uh, how to follow a great answer from Catherine, who's covered so many excellent points. Uh, I, suppose, I suppose from my point of view, when I think about my, my career pathway and I think about the industry I'm in now and I think about the work that we're doing in terms of our current workforce and the type of people that we're looking to recruit, I think it was a load of really, really great answers sort of put forward by the students there. And the, just a few that I'd probably pick out. So I think that the first one that jumped out to me came from, I think it was Joshua mentioned problem solving. Uh, problem solving probably relates to every single person on this panel today in terms of their job and irrespective of what that job is whether it's in an office whether it's on a site whether it's up in the air whether it's underground every, everyone has problems to solve and I think it, it's the skill set that goes to that that's a really generic tool in anyone's toolbox and I think when it comes to skills I always like to think of it as a toolbox and I like to think of those tools in the same way that if you're a carpenter you've got to keep your tools sharpened so that when you need them they're, they're ready to call upon so I think for me the sort of message around skills is about that about that about that toolbox that tool set I think the next skill that jumped out uh, I think it was two and it was Charlie mentioned he mentioned communication and collaboration so again in any job that I've ever done the ability to communicate with people be it in person be it in a group be it speaking directly to people and presenting whether it be in writing uh, nowadays and it, certainly on and be it in terms of things like social media how we communicate and present ourselves incredibly important obviously as we know um, social media is a big permanent record of everything so every, everything that goes up never really comes down and so you know it's something that we need to be mindful of irrespective of where we are in our careers and it's something that certainly for people like myself if we were kind of part way into their career we've had to adapt and pivot whereas maybe for the the younger people on the call it's something that you're it's just a way of life for you so i think some really interesting learning there across my career um shalina mentioned developing ideas and again when i think about certainly the, the project i'm working on at the moment you know it's it's all about ideas and again if you link that in with the problem solving is how do you how do we do this how, how do we actually go about building a railway line that goes from there to there and how do we sort of solve problems along the way but actually how do we then use it as an opportunity to develop some innovative thinking uh, and put that into practice so again developing ideas and I guess being brave enough to develop those ideas in the first place and I think that's again something I've maybe picked up along the years and, and certainly been working with others and I think it was an old expression and I've no idea who said it but they sort of said the people who want to change the world are usually people who do um, so I think there's something there about actually if you've got ideas and you've got ambitions and you've got thoughts about how things could be then you know don't lose sight of those um because it's you know it, it's easy to kind of lose track of big ideas and i think always kind of re retain those because uh, you know, those are the things that can keep you going and i think the last point for me um and actually this is probably something i'd like to be better at uh stefan made the point of being organized um I'm probably a bit like you, Max, in that I kind of like to start things. Uh, maybe not as strong at completing them, um, so I'm not certainly a completer finisher if I looked at my sort of personality type. Um, but being organised is massively important. You know, we all, everyone on this call will have a busy 
diary. They probably have two or three email inboxes. They're probably learning to work in person, online, in a hybrid fashion from home. So actually being organized and being on top of your workload, whether you're a builder on a site, whether you're working in a film studio, uh, whether you're sort of sat at home managing uh, an, an administration role, being organized is incredibly, incredibly important. And, and the good thing is actually for, for everyone on the call, irrespective of being a parent, a student or an employer, it's, it's generic. So get us back to that generic skill set. We These things are great in an employability context, but actually often they're skills for life. So yeah, I think those would be the key things I'd pick out, Max. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, and definitely, yeah, I'm good at starting, not always good at finishing. Um, last but not least again, Dave. Oh no, I, I do apologise. I've missed Nigel, haven't I? Nigel. Story of my life. Story of my life. Um, I suppose the, the, the thing that I look for um, is probably something that's obviously come from my career as well. It's passion. Um, and it's passion about what you do. And no matter what industry you're going to go into, whether it be engineering, whether it be creative, it's to have that passion. So if, you're, if you, if you are a hair, want to be in hairdressing, that's an art form. That's an artist. You're creating a sculpture. And some would say you're a, a psychologist as well, because you have to listen to all the stories as well and give opinion. Um, but for us in engineering, you know, from a, from a skill set, uh, maths and science obviously is, is key, is critical, because it's, uh, it's the, the, the key subjects. Maths will help you with the engineering element um, and become good engineers. I suppose from a, from a career path, um, I started in additive manufacturing eight years ago, um, so my late 30s um, on that side of things. The important factor, the important things for, for me was getting the foundations in place, understanding what you want to do with your career and having that passion, having that desire, whatever that will, will be um, and whatever sector you want to work in and get the foundations in place. Once you do that, your career will then start moving in a direction that you want to go into. So if you want to be working here at the Digital Manufacturing Centre, there is numerous paths for you to take. It's not just one path and then that's it. It's about um, either going to university to, sub, to, um, to um, look into materials, be a material scientist, become a bachelor's degree and all that. Or it could be an apprenticeship that gives you another route into um, the company, more of a hands-on role. But again, your career, once you have that engineering foundation, can then start moving in whatever direction it needs to take, take into. So um, I work with some very, very good engineers, far better than, than myself. Um, I class myself an, an amateur engineer comparing up to them. But I'm running the facility and, um, my engineering skills have taken me all around the world, working in different sectors, different industries. So having that good foundation, having that passion for your baseline engineering, to your baseline, whatever you want to do in life, then it just grows into whichever direction you want to go into. That's brilliant. That's awesome. Um, and now you can start to see, now we're starting to see some differences. And when now we're talking about maths and science as well, Listen to what um, what was said there by Nigel about passion as well, because passion is important. And um, even at a young age, I mean, we all have that dream job, don't we? What you know? What's you, I tell you, mine when I was when I was younger, I wanted to be either a train driver or a racing driver, and I'm neither. Um, but I did try to be a racing driver. I did motor racing up until I was 22. I actually still do motor racing now, but I have to fund it myself. Um, but passion. What is passion? How, how does that display itself? And when you start to think about these things that you're good at and these strengths that you have, even at a young age, think about the things that you are good at and whether you enjoy them. And then think about the things that maybe you're not so good at. And do you enjoy those? And is there a reason maybe why you don't enjoy them? Or is there a reason why you're not so good at them? Is it because you don't enjoy them? And are you really good at other things because you really enjoy it? So now you need to start to think about these things. Um, I think Catherine made the point at the beginning as well. Um, nowadays, it's, it, it, it can be hard to know what am I going to do in my future again let's take it back we're at a really early stage here that, that you guys are at but 
you know, there's so many different things that you can do. And it's about exploring more about yourself. And you will find out more about yourself and about these strengths, these skills, these enjoyments, the things that you love, the things you don't love. And that's what's really important to look at over the next few years. And then you can start to align it and look at these different industries and think, yeah, maybe I do want to get into engineering. Or no, maybe I do want to get into to films. But there's so many different things we can do. So remember to always be exploring and keep an inquisitive, open mind. Some of you may know, hey, I want to be a lawyer and that's my path. And that's what I'm going to do. Think about have you got the right skills for it and how do you improve on those? OK, so let's move to Dave. I was a bit premature earlier. I apologize, Dave. I know you're still there. But Dave, same question to you. Yeah, so I guess um, as a software company, it's kind of easy to look at Esri and sort of think, OK, if I want to work with them, then what I need is kind of I need to be a whiz on a computer. I need to be like great at coding or programming or that kind of thing. Um, and yes, we've got some people in, in our company who are amazing at that um, and they're involved in building the software that everyone else is using. Um, but there's loads of us, um, I, me, I've absolutely never written a line of code in my life and I wouldn't know where to start. It's a, a completely different language. Um, so for other people who work in our company, um, it's all about that ability to think spatially. Um, so in terms of a subject that's, that's important there, it's, it's more about geography being the important subject. Um, and for, for lots of us, again, we're kind of working with lots of data all the time. So maybe maths is a, the important kind of part of that, that work. Um, but we're a, we're a whole company. We've got um, people doing all sorts of jobs. We've got people who are working in marketing and people who are working in sales and people who are working in finance. So the, the people and their skills for those different roles in the company are kind of different again, um, I guess. It's a real kind of mismatch depending on, um, mismatch depending on the roles that those people are doing. Um, so thinking about those kind of subject choices, um, some of those kind of steer us towards some of those different roles, but there's there's lots of other skills that people have already touched on that are, um, are really important to the work that, that we do. So Catherine mentioned um, some of those like really consistent standard skills of just like being a good employee, whatever job you're doing, things like being punctual and being reliable and organized and, and that kind of stuff. Um, some are a bit more specific to us so um, lots of our, um, our guys will spend time doing presentations um, they might be presenting really technical information to experts um, in which case there's a, um, a type of presentation there um, or they might be um, presenting to people who are absolutely not at all experts um, so if you're great at maybe helping your gran with her smartphone um, or in my case helping my dad with his smartphone um, maybe those kind of skills are really important. Um, the ability to to take something that's kind of complex and make it simple and understandable for someone who doesn't really is not an expert in that field, who kind of doesn't have the same level of knowledge and skills as, as perhaps you do. Um, and a big part of what what a lot of people in our company do is is to help our customers use our software to solve their own problems. Um, so it's all about kind of looking at a situation, being able to analyze that situation, being able to pick apart that problem, um, being quite analytical, maybe being kind of curious and inquisitive to ask, ask those deeper questions to understand that that company or their situation um, a little bit more deeply um, and then have that creativity to kind of step back and think about designing a solution um, that uses the best bits of, of what we've got available um, to help them solve their problem. Um, in a different way. So to kind of find that solution that works for, um, for them. Um, and, and finally, kind of being able to work as part of a team. I think probably loads of other people have mentioned teamwork as being a really important thing. But within our company, you might be working within a team of people that you know. Um, so you might be um, within the team of your colleagues, within the, the small team that you work in. But also, we quite often dump people into other companies. So we might send one of our um, our colleagues out and they'll work for um, maybe a day a week or maybe every day for a month inside another company um, just so they can get a real sort of real insight into how that company works and what their problems are and what they're trying to do um, and so if you're doing that you've got to be able to kind of fit into that new team um, and work with people that you're perhaps not familiar with or people that you kind of haven't haven't met before they're not you'll met you can be great at working in a team with with people you know really well but a little bit Kind of working with people in a team that you've never met can be slightly different so being able to to jump into that new team to kind of settle into there and 
and work within that new team context is a, um, a thing that lots of our, our colleagues do sort of day in, day out. That's fantastic. OK, so. I want you guys to start to think about these things and what we're hearing here and, and, and you hear all these different things. Now, we are. Um, we're people who have been in jobs for a while and we've done different things and maybe we've we've tried different skills and different strengths okay um i want to ask all the panelists quickly we'll do like a quick fire question i know that this wasn't a prepared one so hopefully we're, we'll we'll get this nailed but um do you have skills now that you didn't know that you had when you were young when you were the age of these students, do you have a couple of skills that you have and you have used now that you didn't know that you had when you were younger? So Catherine, let's go with you first. Mm, absolutely, uh, without a doubt. One of those is problem solving and logistics. Uh, they're, they're two main criteria for, for my job, given what I do. Um, it's also being able to talk to, to other people. Um, which I'm not very good at, I have to say. These things make me nervous. Um, I can't see people, so it's slightly less nerve-wracking. Um, and I shouldn't be, but addressing people, public speaking, terrifies me. But it's something I have to do for my job, and I've learned to relax a little bit more with it. Um, so, yeah, those are the three things that I think really stand out. Interesting. That's good to hear. Um, I can share with uh, I can share with uh, uh, everybody here that when I was younger, I was not able to speak publicly. Um, very similar. Um, but even even in school, in class, if I was ever asked to stand in front of my class and present, I couldn't. My throat would close and I would sweat and I couldn't speak and I physically could not speak. And um, it was because I was too nervous and too scared. And if you just said to me when I was younger, or even if I was 16 or 17, that my job would be to present to to many people and to do this as a job which I do now I would have laughed and said no way because I just not I'm not good at it I was always good at it I just thought I wasn't good at it and that's the difference and this is one thing that you will you will learn as you go along that there are things that you might not have tried or you don't think you're so good at because of what a story you tell yourself but you need to give yourself a chance and try things and see if you are good and get other people's opinions because things change as you get older we all develop new skills and we get better at things there's some things that i haven't done for a number of years and i'm not very good at them anymore because i just haven't used that skill for a long time but there's other things that you will develop that's interesting to hear thank you for that catherine okay paddy what about you uh i think one of the things i've maybe learned a little bit as i've gone through my career is is listening um and, and being a bit more patient in terms of uh, communication and collaboration with others um i suppose i've always been a bit of a talker and i know some of the panelists who know me a bit better will attest to that but actually i think over the years i've, I've learned it's really important to listen as well um, and take on board the ideas of the people you're working with because everyone's opinion matters in any scenario um and, and it really doesn't matter the status of a person and and, and I think it's, I think being being prepared to be a bit more patient because it's easy to want to do things and want to do things now and want to rush through. But it's 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 become apparent to me over the years that that's often when mistakes happen and it's quite good to work collaboratively and, and share ideas. And I think the only other things probably, I guess, over the years, I've become a little bit more confident in, in my own sense of self. Um, maybe at the start of my career, I would, I would kind of look to others and think, do I have to be like that to get ahead? Do I have to be like that to succeed? Well, you know, and actually I think over time through trial and error and success and failure, I've probably worked out actually what worked quite well and how I play, how I best play to my strengths and also how others can get that out and then probably look for opportunities according to that. So, you know, if you're a square peg, don't try and squeeze yourself into a round hole, go and find a square one. So probably those two things. Brilliant, I love that piece of advice. If you're a square pig, don't put yourself into a round hole. Absolutely. It's about finding out about yourself. One thing that you'll notice as well is that we are all we are all different and we are all still learning. And so for you guys too, you're young and you're exploring and you're learning and you'll learn more as you get you go further in life. So um, next, Nigel, what about you? What skills do you have now that you didn't have when you were younger? Yeah, I suppose if I, if I look back, I was the uh, the guy that was, was always being uh, bullied and picked on at school and the biggest introverts in the playground. Um, and as I said, now I, I run companies with 150 people in, 80 people, not worried about at all what I'm going to say to anybody. 
who I upset, but mainly really about who I inspire and who I take on um, and develop further, whatever age they are. So um, I suppose over time, self-confidence is, is something that I've developed in myself and, and applying um, the morals that I have um, into the day-to-day -day and taking people with me on that journey. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's about uh, yeah I, I guess uh, developing myself so I can develop other people. Developing yourself so you can develop other people. That's an interesting one. Okay, that's really good. That's really good. Um, okay, so Dave, what about you? I think I'm going to say this almost the same as everyone else. So I think when I was probably the same age as the guys who are watching this I was probably pretty um I was very shy I was pretty nervous I would never stand up in front of people and and talk if I if I really didn't have to um and I um I would tend never to really kind of put my ideas forward if I had a we were kind of in a group situation maybe we were kind of all sort of planning trying to do that kind of group problem solving type of thing i would never never thrust forward my idea for fear of it being kind of thrown back at me as like nah that's not a it's not an idea because well you're not one of the cool kids so your idea won't be any good um whereas now i've kind of sort of discovered i guess over through my career that actually my ideas are really valuable and, and quite often i think about problems in a different way to someone else and and being able to throw my idea forward often means that we kind of end up challenging a, a status quo and, and we end up going somewhere slightly different to where we would have ended up otherwise because we all think in slightly different ways every individual has different ways of solving different problems or tackling different things um and i think well the thing that i've kind of grown to understand and appreciate is that that all ideas are valuable um and so throw them out there and kind of be confident enough to to throw them out there and and be shared and and refined and put together to make the way interesting i like that a lot i like that a lot um, and that's really good so think about the things that we've said here and about those little bits of discovery those things that you'll find out later as you go along now we're talking about skills and industries here okay i'm hoping that you guys can start to see that all skills are valuable because everybody's different wherever you go i want you to think about this that every um every team that you join okay every place that you work everywhere that you go you will always be an individual and everybody is different no two people in this world are the same we are all different and we all have different strengths and we all have different characteristics and that's what makes a valuable and successful team those differences if everybody was the same and was good at all the same things nobody would advance or go anywhere further because we would all be stuck being good at the same things and bad at the same things so don't be afraid to be an individual don't be afraid to be good at what you are good at and don't worry about having certain things that you're not so good at because that's what we are so think about those things i'm going to ask another question as well i want the students to tell me what they enjoy now we talked earlier about what strengths do you have what skills do you have which is great because you have lots of them but is there one that you particularly enjoy? And I'll give you an example like, OK, my particular strength is talking. I love talking. I think you can tell I love talking that. And that's why I'm so good at this job, because I love talking and I have done for years. OK, but I never knew that that would help me in a job or that would help me do anything. But then there's some people who might be really uh, uh, excited by um, um, reading books or, or writing or numbers or organizing things. OK, so tell me about those things in the in the chat box that you enjoy. And we've got some things that are coming through now, being arty and creative, playing the piano, playing basketball. OK, and when you write those, I want you to think about why you enjoy them, what makes you enjoy them. OK, we've got somebody there who says YouTubing as well. And I want you to think about what does that actually mean? YouTubing. Is it creating content? Is it editing content? Is it actually giving advice to other people? Is that what? youtubing is exciting for you about and i think if you're good at creating content i don't know i may maybe pinewood studios is somebody somewhere to go and have a look for a future we've got people who put in reading writing songs writing songs with my ukulele wow we've really got some students that are far ahead of where i was at, at, at that stage in life cooking coding science maths sports logic it's brilliant coding is a very oh do i want to say this and sound old it's a very new thing 
like uh, coding maybe didn't exist so much when I was at school. Gymnastics. And when you write these, like I said, I want you to think about why you enjoy these, what makes you enjoy them. OK, because that's essentially what you want to, to, to identify. What skills are in there? What do I enjoy doing? OK, so we've got history, art and language, even though I'm not good at French. Yeah, but there's other languages in the world as well. And you can get better by practicing. Trust me. And being good at languages, as I learned, was was helpful for for coding and writing web pages. Acting. Somebody's put acting makes me happy because I can express myself. What a brilliant thing. What a great thing to know. Okay? Cycling. I love cycling because I'm on my own when I cycle and I'm just with my thoughts and I don't need to talk to anyone and nobody can talk to me. And somebody's put that they can connect with different age groups. What a great thing. And that will be valuable now and in the future too. Okay. But lots of great things in the chat box, lots of great stuff. What I want to say as well is if you've got some questions specific for anybody on the panel, start to put them in the Q&A box, okay? Start to put them in the Q&A box. We're going to ask the panel a few more questions as well. So we've got being creative and learning to cook, learning the Korean language, okay? Creative writing, open water swimming. Now, panelists, I want to ask you guys, if I'm a young student at school now, what advice would you give me to, to develop certain skills or what advice would you give me, not even necessarily to develop specific or certain skills, but what sort of things should I be thinking about considering that I'm, I'm young and I'm free and I've got so much potential that I, I'm not sure I know about yet and I've got so many things I can explore and discover. What kind of things do you think students should be doing? And take that from a point of view of maybe now that you're a bit older and you look back and go, I wish I'd have known that when I was that age. What would you say? So Catherine, we'll start with you first. What would you say? Um, I would say ask questions, lots of questions. Um, you know what, when we're, all when we're all kids at three years old, there is that one question that we continually ask, which is why, why, why? Whenever, and, and parents on the, the uh, panel and, and guests this evening, will understand that that question is really irritating, but those three-year-olds will learn from asking those questions. So why should we ever stop asking that question? Why, why? Keep on learning, keep on being inquisitive. Um, there was actually a really good question in, in there that, that was, would you change your career uh, given, given it your time again? And the answer is I would consider uh, a career change. And I seriously don't think it's too late for me to have a career change either. But all the skills I've learned in this particular job can transfer to different sectors. And I think that was, yeah, you know, embarked on what touched on before. Um, I do want to possibly go to a different sector and, and take my skills with me. And that's totally possible for me to do um, and explore a different sector. And, and likewise, at the end of just for a second, think about all those jobs at the end credits of any high end TV or film. They're all roles. And I can imagine they're all roles in. Dave sector, in Paddy sector, in Nigel sector. Um, and actually throughout my career, I have thought about branching off into something completely different. Um, fact is with one of those, you have to study. I'm not very good at studying. The other, the other one's slightly more creative. So there, there are options for everyone, but never stop asking questions um, would be my advice to people and learning. Knowledge is key, I think, um, to, to becoming more self-confident and, and taking yourself forward in, in life. Absolutely. What a great piece of advice. Never stop asking questions. Always keep asking questions. Always be inquisitive. Um, and yet, yeah, one thing you will learn that we all have different career paths and we've chosen to do different things. And as you get older, you will change and, and life changes and different things change. That's so great, great advice that. And it isn't obviously it's never too late to change career or try different things. And the one thing that hopefully you will notice, too, is that those skills that you have, um, Catherine called, said transferable skills. So what I want you guys to understand is transferable skills just means those skills that you have that can be used in many different things. If you're good at football because you're a great team player and you're good at communicating with your other people and your team, you can take that into, into a different sport. You can take that into a scenario where you might work in a restaurant with a team of waiters or into a kitchen with a team of chefs or into a, a team of engineers. So think about those things. Your skills are transferable and that's what we want you to see understand what your skills are because they can take you to so many different places right time is uh, is is uh, moving so paddy what about you same question to you what would you say yeah um catherine's answer is absolutely brilliant because 
that's that's one of the key things and again lessons over the years i've sat in many meetings thinking i I don't know what they're talking about, but I don't ask what's going on. I don't say what's that about. And actually putting my hand up and saying, can you explain it? I don't know. Can you help? Why is that that? It just it's really, it's really empowering. Um, so I think absolutely always ask why. And again, it's, you know, generally that's the way to get to the best solution. Um, I guess I'm going to link back to a question that Monica asked in the chat, which is if you started out again today, what would you do differently? So I, I put myself back in, uh, in my sort of 11 year old self as I sort of look at the years ahead in school take say yes have a go and take risks so you know at 11 12 13 14 you've got so much opportunity around you um, as I had and I said no to an awful lot of things either because I was worried or I didn't have confidence or I didn't think it looked cool or you know I just couldn't see the value of it and if I look back now and I pester my own sons who are uh, year eight and year nine incessantly say, if the school starts a new club, join it, have a go, have a look, try it. What's the worst that happens? You might waste an afternoon, you might waste a week, but you'll always learn something from it. You'll learn something from every experience. So if there's, a cl if there's clubs, societies, um, new projects that the school's putting on, if there's opportunities outside school to get involved in volunteering, supporting local clubs, just say yes to stuff. Just say yes, because it's generally being ready, being available, being willing, that leads on to so many other things. And I imagine most of us on the panel today have found jobs or found our way into jobs or projects simply because we were in the right place at the right time and prepared to say yes. Um, so I think absolutely just just have a go, basically. Definitely, definitely always try something. Definitely always have a go. This is some great advice that you guys are getting. And if you follow through on it, then you will have great futures. Um, OK, so, Nigel, what about you? What would you say? Yeah, two great answers. I don't know how to follow that, to be honest with you. But um, I suppose the the thing from, from my side is there was a sitcom back in the a comedy sitcom in the 1970s that some of the older audience might remember, which is Some Mothers Do Have Them. And there was Frank Spencer. Um, and Frank Spencer's mum was very key to Frank Spencer's development and because she made him stand in front of the mirror every single day and promise himself that in every single way, every single day, he will get better and better. And I think that's probably how I've viewed myself is complete, com you know, continually evolving, continually getting better. And the way that we have to do this is to put ourselves out there. And, and just Paddy just made a great a statement there of, you know, making yourself a little bit vulnerable, going to join a group. Don't keep in there. There was a question on confidence. The only way you're going to get over that confidence hurdle is to express yourself, is to be able to, to go out there and, and try new things and gauge and self learn about how reaction that you get. And if you get a bad reaction, don't worry, you've learned about it, but it's about getting that good react, learning and trying new things, getting a good reaction and uh, there. What would I try differently at school? I probably learned to, to knuckle down a bit more and, and learn a bit more when the lessons were on, but um, it's maybe who I am today. Um, but uh, certainly from, from my side is, the biggest thing is learn, continually learning. I'm, I know I look older, but I'm only 47 years old and I'm learning every single day. So when you're at school, keep learning and putting yourself out there and uh, expressing yourself. Absolutely brilliant. Same again, you see there, there's, there's, there's a popular theme there, isn't there? It's about just trying things, just getting out there because you guys have so much potential and so much talent and so much skill that is untapped and unused. And you also need to go and find out what you are really good at, what you're good at and what you're not so good at. And because when you know those things and you find out what you're not so good at and what you don't enjoy, then you don't need to worry about going to do things that, that involve those things. I've always tried to find jobs that, that involve things that I do enjoy doing, not the jobs that don't involve the things that I enjoy doing and make me do things I don't like. So that's why I've done those things. But that's why we're here to talk about these skills. And what you're seeing is within all these different industries, there's, there's a lot of overlap. I asked you at the beginning to see if you can see that there's overlap between them, that all these different skills but they all apply to all of these different industries and also 
look at how varied the panel is and uh, what they're capable of and what they do and what they have done and not just them themselves but their companies and their industries is such a great array of things which is in your area which is even better that's the main thing that you have this on your doorstep that it's near you which is great so finally dave what about you i'm i'm going to accuse paddy of stealing my homework um because i'd written down two things um and the very first thing i've written down is say yes to things um so kind of throw yourself in the way of opportunities lots of opportunities will come and be ready to be in the way of those opportunities um and the best way of kind of hitting those opportunities or making those opportunities hit you is to say yes to just as much as you possibly can um so everyone said i kind of don't need to go on about that one. the second thing that i wrote down is once you've said yes to those opportunities and you you've kind of you've had those different experiences try and reflect on those experiences and think about well what skills has that given me because even as adults i think it probably everyone in the panel would sort of say sometimes we kind of look at ourselves and go well i can't do that i don't have i'm not i'm not good at anything i, I can't work out what things i can do um and actually when you look at yourself and you kind of dissect all the things that you do in your in your work and in your life outside work you kind of start to recognize all of those skills that you do have and you can apply those to to jobs and to the world of work and, and you kind of go oh, actually yeah i can i could do that yeah of course i could i've got all of those skills um i just maybe wasn't thinking that i had all of those skills because i i forget where i use them so try and kind of reflect on all of those things that you do by saying yes to everything and that's a really, really, really great point as well, Dave, about the uh, about the, the these skills that you have and not knowing whether you have them or not. Guys, girls, students, we've talked about this and the way that we've talked about it. And I asked you, what skills do you have? What are you good at? And you've told me so many different things, so many different things that, that vary from sports to musical instruments, to to cooking, to to interacting with people, to learning languages. The reason why we're asking you about these and asking you to think about these, we want you to realize that those are the things that give you skills and make you good at things. As you get older and you start to, I know this is a way away, but you start to look at jobs and you think about them and you say, well, it needs me to be a good team player. Or it needs me to be organized, but I don't know if I am, like Dave just said. But you are, because these things that you do, learning a musical instrument, you're organized because A, you have to turn up to the lesson. B, you have to put the practice in. C, you have to pass the grades. And D, you have to learn the thing itself and learn how to read a different language, which is music. So that shows adaptability sacrifices. It shows that you can learn a new language. It shows that you can learn that coordination between, between your brain and your hands. Those are all skills and they transfer to other things. So then when you're playing football, like we said before, you've got a team player. But then remember as well, it's not just about being a team player. We always talk about teamwork. OK, we always talk about, oh, I'm a great team player and I work well in a team. There is a place in this world for those that are great individuals that work well on their own, because there are jobs and there are places where you are going to need to be on your own, concentrate and get the work done. And that some people are really good at that. And that's fantastic. But the skills, learn them, have excitement. OK. Um, think about what you enjoy and what gives you excitement and how you can develop those things and what it can lead to in future life. Don't worry too much about, I need a job that is A, B or C. Think about what do I enjoy? With that, we've got a couple of questions and it just so happens, obviously it's gonna be for Catherine because you work for Pinewood Studios and we anticipated this. First question was, were you involved in the making of Star Wars? I was not. Oh, <laughs> I was at the studios when they were making it, um, but my role is based with it, it staff with Pinewood Studios, and that was a production that was a Lucasfilm production. Um, but I did see Chewbacca and uh, quite a few stormtroopers walking around. OK, OK, that's exciting. That's good. And then we've got another question as well. So for Pinewood, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, can you be any age to start acting? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Uh, you can be a child actor, of course. In fact, my my daughter was nine months old when she was the baby in Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, and she got paid one hundred and forty five pounds. Bless her. She hasn't acted since. But yes, you need uh, all ages. Um, you will have to be chaperoned, obviously, if you're at school age. Um, you still have to carry on your tutoring while you're on set and, and acting. Um, and I think uh, most extras um, agencies start from about 16. So, yeah, there are acting schools, drama schools. If that's the way you want to go, definitely go to a drama school 
where accredited uh, casting directors go to look for for people. Okay, interesting. Okay, good. Um, Julia, you have your hand up. Hi, thanks for that, um, uh, Max. Yeah, just one or two things I wanted to mention. One is I'm an engineer. Second thing is um, uh, the Buck Skills Show web pages. I'm just going to post the link here. Please uh, go and have a little look at that because the companies that are represented on this panel tonight, um, plus all the other uh, panels panelists that we've got uh, over the next couple of mornings and also tomorrow evening for the older key stages, um, are all represented on that web page. And um, it, you can explore those companies in a lot more detail and look at their um, job um, vacancies and, and the sort of career paths that they have and the kind of work that they do and everything else. It's so informative. So just try and find some time to look up that link that I've just posted so you can see a little bit more about everybody that's been on the call tonight. I mean, and I can say I've had a look at it myself and there is some really great information on there. A lot of the information on there is great. The, the recordings from these sessions will go on there as well. And like we said, that we you can use them going forward as well. Now, are there any other questions that we've got for the, the, the panelists while they're here? Um, somebody has asked about YouTubing and I don't know, I, I genuinely don't know who would answer this question, but somebody likes YouTubing, YouTubing, and is there any advice to how you can develop in this area? I would say one thing about that. If you do enjoy YouTubing, it's about doing it and just exploring and trying and don't be afraid to make mistakes and try the different content or different ways of presenting and getting feedback and listening to that feedback and taking it on board and adapting as you change. And that doesn't just apply to YouTubing, that applies to everything that you're gonna do in life. As you grow and as you get older, like all the panelists have said, try those new things go out and explore. And when you try something new, you might find that you, you really enjoy it, but you're not so good at it yet because it's the first or the second time you've done it. Take the feedback, learn, change, adapt. And if you find it a struggle and you're not enjoying it anymore, then maybe don't carry on with it and try and find something else. But there are so many things you can do, but always be thinking about how does it transfer to other areas so that you know you have those skills and you can use them in different situations, okay? Does anybody have any advice on YouTubing? Does anybody on the panel do any YouTubing? No, no but I would imagine that it's about promotion, self-promotion, marketing, and reaching your key audience for whatever your content is. Perfect. Perfect. Now, another question for, uh, for Catherine. What can you do behind the scenes in films with skills of creativity and improvisation? Ooh, that's going to be a long list, right? Wow, well, behind the scenes is a, <clears throat> is a majority of those, those end credits that I was talking about earlier. Um, uh, everything happens behind the scenes. There's only a small majority of people that are used on a daily basis to film. Uh, so 250 people perhaps on set, everyone else out of a 1400 strong crew on a big film is behind the scenes. So everything, you tell me what, what you're interested in, what you wanna do, I'll match you up with the job in the creative sector, for sure. There is, and again, that's that's a good um, uh, sample of of what is out there in in the wider world. Learn what you're good at, learn what you enjoy, and then you will start to see where it where it leads to. But when you have these resources like the Buck Skills Hub, um, that's what's going to help you as you go forward. What GCSEs do I need to do to get into certain sectors and start to meet these sectors and find out? I enjoy this stuff. Can I apply it to a job? Because trust me, you can find what you enjoy. You'll find a job for it. Don't find a job and then see if you enjoy it. Find what you enjoy and you'll find the job for it. Okay. Do we have any other questions that are coming through that, that people want to ask? Because we are coming up to 6.59 and we're going till 7 o'clock and we've got our panellists here. Any other questions? Um, Rita has said thank you for the precious advice, which is great. No, but but just to say that I'm available through the Buck Skills Hub if anyone's got any particular questions uh, that they do want to ask uh, online. Fantastic. Um, happy to help. Anyone? His hands up, Max, just to say. Oh, I missed that. Where have we got hands up? Yeah, it was mine. It was mine. I was just coming back to the question about YouTube and Max. And I've, um, in previous roles, I've, I've done a number of these large careers and jobs, fairs in, in sort of London and Birmingham. I met an awful lot of students over the years who've talked about their sort of online uh, content and the on, on, on 
things that they produce in terms of design, in terms of audio, in terms of visual. And the number of times I've asked, have they got a show reel? Have they got any sort of way of presenting what they've done? And more generally, the answer is no. Oh, I didn't think of that. And so this sort of advice has been think about how you package up the things that you've done and, and uh, as, a, as a way to display and, and present what you can do. And also, as you get a little bit older, maybe think about how those skills could be useful for local organisations, um, particularly sort of in the charitable and community sector. I know loads of organisations in all sorts of things that, that were desperate for that sort of skill set because it's completely new to them. And so the ability to have someone that could give them a bit of advice around social media that might be able to produce some promotional content for them. It, is a you've got your work experience straight away. You've got your you've got your kind of CV material that you can then take to a job interview or a college interview. So again, back to your point, just do it, do it, but capture it and be and be prepared to present and talk about it. Absolutely. Back to that same advice. You're you're seeing a popular theme here. Just go out there and try it. Try it and find out if you enjoy it and if you're good at it. Um, and I am going to ask um, um, Nigel as well. I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but we had a little bit. Um, um, already, and I'll ask Dave as well. Any piece of advice that you would give to those younger people that you wish you'd had back then that you know now? Um, a bit of advice: um, enjoy your life, because if you're miserable, it's a long time to uh, to be miserable. Make sure that the job you choose, you have the passion for, that you enjoy, and just make sure you enjoy and learn every single day. Um, yeah, um, that's what I try and do. The only the glue that holds my life together is my job. So uh, I love my job. There you go. That's really great advice. Really great advice. And I know Dave, um, we already touched upon it, but anything that you would add? Yeah, I guess I, I'm probably going to echo what I just said. So you kind of find the job that you love, and then it won't feel like going to work. Um, you, lots every day you have to go to work. So um, make that journey to work not feel like you're going to work make it feel like you're going to do something that you really enjoy and that you're you're passionate about and um, max i think mentioned mentioned find the thing you're passionate about earlier and yeah if you can do that then it's not really going to work is it absolutely that is absolutely right right it is three minutes past seven. We are meant to finish at seven o'clock. This video, this recording will go up. If you've enjoyed the session and we've got lots of thanks that are coming through to all of you guys, panelists that have been here and given your advice. Um, so many thanks. And everybody is saying it has been a really valuable session. It's got them talking. Um, parents are talking. There's some great conversations happening, which is fantastic. If you've really enjoyed the session, remember that this recording will be available on, on the hub. So direct your friends towards it direct other parents towards it. This is a great resource and let's get them using it. Young people, go and enjoy life, enjoy exploring those skills and doing everything and listen to what the panelists said and you will have a great future ahead of you. So thank you everybody, thank you for tonight and thank you to Marina and Julia as well for inviting me to come and host this session. I have really, really enjoyed it. So thank you to all of you. Thank you panelists. Thanks Max and thanks to all the panelists. More than welcome. Thank you, pleasure. pleasure. Thank you.